What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dr. V Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Verga. Today, I have an amazing guest and a longtime friend, Jabrian Johnson, formerly known as CS1. He was uh, an amazing friend to me. He still is. I met him when we were both in the Navy. We became, you know, good friends. But what really, what really stuck with me is his natural leadership abilities. He has transitioned out of the Navy, and today we're going to be talking about that transition, his, a little bit about his business ventures, and a little bit about his reconnection with God, which I think is extremely important in terms of spiritual wellness and spiritual journeys. So without further ado, let's get into this interview with Jabrian. Yes, so um, Brian or Jabrian. Either one, um, from Dallas, Texas, born and raised, um, grew up in Pleasant Grove. If anyone in Texas, Dallas knows about Pleasant Grove, it's a great place. It's not much pleasantries, <laughs> but it's a great place. Um, and it's where I got my my start, my drive. Uh, growing up there in Texas and my mom being um, a single mother and thriving and just being all things amazing. That's how and who I am today. She helped birth that in more ways than one. Um, then I joined the Navy around 2010, um, I, which is a funny story because I originally dipped in and I almost didn't go. But then my mom was like, even though she was against me joining the military anyway, she was like, no, you gotta go now. I'm like, just six months ago, you didn't want me to go anyway. But I mm-hmm. uh, was in the Navy for 13 years, got out last June, uh, June 30th, 2023. and. I'm still living in San Diego. I bought a place here, so I'm doing life in San Diego now. Miss home a little bit, but it's more of a, I need to needed to um, step out on my own without the fear of uh, not succeeding, uh, without having a, a real blueprint as to what or how to do life outside of the military. So I decided to take the risk or the chance, more so calculated risk, um, in San San Diego. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting because I met you in the Navy. I was broken. I remember um, we were you were stationed at Naval Base San Diego, and I met you kind of like on base duty. And um, yeah, we were always it was always colors for us. We were always hoisting that flag up, bringing that flag down. <laughs> but um, every duty day. But yeah, I um, I was curious as to I, I know that there was some interesting things that happened. We don't have to go into too much detail, but. What was it like leaving the Navy after 13 years? Um, leaving was leaving wasn't the hard part. Um, okay. For me, what was hard was the expectation that I felt was being placed on me. When I was talking to people about me getting out, um, knowing how I am in the military, how I was in the military, always a go-getter, grinding, doing these things, everybody would tell me, Oh, we know you're going to be great outside because you're this, you're that, and all of these different things. I'm like, well, what is it that you all see? Because maybe it's in me, but I don't see it nor feel it. So it was like, how do I tangibly grab this thing or these things that they see to be successful? So I placed the unrealistic expectation on myself within a year. I would be here. I would do this and I would have this. Um, and it's not right. It's it, it, it could be right, even with the plan there are different variables that may come into play that could affect or stop or make you drop the ball. Um, and it's life and it's more about continuing those. So the hardest part for me was um, now that I'm out, how do I live up to my own expectation and not the expectation that I felt was being placed on me? Rather it been people placing on me or me accepting that uh, expectation because it becomes a burden because for 13 years of my life, I knew what I need to do in the morning and the afternoon, how to lead, how to help people grow. Um, but for myself, I wasn't really doing it. So now I'm in a space of I'm out, there's no one else but me, and I need to make sure that I am growing, I'm moving forward. Those same uh, things that I was doing and putting into people, now I have to put it into myself. And that's the scary part, because when it's you, I mean, there's, it's, you can win or lose. You can you can fail or you can keep going. But failure is not a bad thing. And that's I want to break the monotony of what failure looks like because mm-hmm. failure is also growth. No, I agree. And I, I do. 
I kind of get that. Obviously, I wasn't in as long as you were, but I know that when I finally decided to get out, there was this this bar that was set by everyone else but me. And it, um, yeah, getting out is always real. It's different for everybody, for sure. But it, um, it can be somewhat stressful. I just, I remember CS1, you were just, I mean, I think I met you at like CS3, maybe? I don't, CS3. I don't know. Into three. <laughs> yeah, I, I met you kind of like earlier on in my career um, in the Navy. I had like just gotten to San Diego, but yeah, I just, you were always a phenomenal leader and I don't think it was because of the military structure. I think it was just because of who you were. I just, I had Master Chief Nation on um, last week and there's just this like inherent quality and in good people that make them better leaders like there's good leaders but then there's like legitimate real leaders and i could see the way your junior sailors interacted with you and how if they made rank or did anything good it was just they were so proud of themselves but they loved to like come to you and be like look at what i did and having that like that pride you can see how proud you were of their successes and of their failures as learning experiences so that's um yeah, sorry, just little, little no, spiel I'm, there. <laughs> that's a, a part of the reason some people in leadership didn't like me because they didn't have those connections with their people. And for me, it's, I always led with uh, my own experiences as well. A lot of times people in the military or people in life, I want to just generalize it to military because it's, it's a people thing and not necessarily just a military thing, but people don't like to show that they have stumbled, they've failed, they've messed up in some kind of way. Um, with my sailors, they saw the good and the bad and how I overcame those bad things by expressing it. I believe that a lot of the things that happen to people in the military and in life can be avoided if we share more of our stories and the, the things, the repercussions and things that came with it. So my sailors saw that and I was able to be approached. If I was doing something wrong, they can approach me within a respectful way, the way I'm, appro I'm approaching them. But not a lot of people wanted that and didn't like that. So it was seen as, well, how is he so happy with the sailors and they're so happy with him? I'm like, because we have a level of understanding, like there is Navy, yes, but we're also human beings, we're people. And we're gonna mess up. It's And chastising me to an extent or, or you know, disciplining me to an extent, my mom did it, but I know she did it out of love and it's more of how you do it and how it's delivered, how it's received. Uh, we have to f remember that we're all, we're people, we mess up as well. Not a lot of people like that. No, it's, and it's, I think in terms of leadership in the military, I think kind of looking back, you can see that if it wasn't for leaders like you, if it wasn't for those random, just little bits of hope, that I think that their attention would be tanked. If it wasn't for the fact that there were just some quality leaders that brought in characteristics with them when they joined and then just kind of grew from there. But um, so what are you, what are you up to now? Um, you're in the same spot in San Diego, I'm assuming. Right. So like, how's that been? Like, how's, how's life after service? Uh, life at the service is still a, even a year, a year seems, well, in my mind, it seemed like a long time, but it's not really. And it's going by quick. Um, I am in a better place than I was when I first got out, I'm not knowing anything. Um, originally, it was, you know, I'm going to go to school and just do school and figure out, you know, what I want to do. I gave myself like two months of not just traveling, doing the things that we couldn't just up in one day just do in the military, you know, got to put in that request to, to go on leave, to to be an adult. Now, being a civilian, you're an actual an adult. I, I said this to my dad, because he was part of the military as well. And I'm like, he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, when well, you're in the military, I don't care how old you are. Somebody is telling you what you can and cannot do. And it's different than in the civilian world, because the civilian world, yeah, they can tell you no, but you can still do it. There's not much repercussion. You may have to go and find a new job or or something, but in the military, if you do or go against, that finding a new job may not come as quick because you're gonna get put on restriction, get bust down, your livelihood, all these things are just affected, and then you're deploying. So I felt like a real adult. I felt like I was graduating high school, getting out and doing the world. Um, and what a lot of people don't understand, and I try to push it, um, 
I, like I said, I made mistakes in the military. The military for me joining at the age of 19, but going in at 20, I grew up in the Navy. Like the things that people go through in high school and college rather, um, getting in trouble, doing like they still have normal things. But for us in the military, you're going to boot camp, leaving boot camp, you're going to um, a ship or a command or whatever, you're out for so long. So I am the things that I should have learned in my 20s, I'm now getting in my 30s. So I'm redoing life in, in a sense. Um, but it's been a joy. Uh, uh, it's been scary. <laughs> I'm back in therapy. But I, I say that with positivity more than anything, because it's needed. Um, I had to unlearn a lot of things um, and reteach myself things and then learn myself because I only know me as Jabrian, CS1, CS2, all the like these things. I don't know Jabrian as the civilian. So I'm learning those things about myself and just leaning into what a good day is and what a bad day is because you get both. And um, that's, I mean, that's life. Yeah, no, I, I'm happy to hear you're in therapy, mostly because I'm a huge advocate for therapy. I have never not been in therapy. I think since the day I got out, I stepped foot in a therapist's office just because there's a culture shock of not being in uniform and not being able to just go look up a regulation to make a decision for you and having to like <laughs> make the decision yourself. And it's like, can I do this? And the answer is like, yeah, you, there's no there's no rule saying that you can't do this or you have to be back at a certain time. I remember the first yeah. time I went to Mexico as a civilian, I was like, do I got to tell somebody like, <laughs> do I, do I have to be back on Monday? Like what, what's going on? Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I can, I can relate. Really? Yeah. I'm like, I have a nose ring now and I'm like, okay, can I wear this? And then like yeah. all these different things, my hair color, like it's so yeah. there's night and day from it. And yeah, I, I'm requesting to go to Vegas because that's out of the house. But it's like, no, just go. Or fly yeah. to whatever. Like, ah, it's different. Wow. Yeah. I think that's when I see like a, like now, I mean, even when I was getting out, folks that were getting out around the same time as me, it's, you have this like rite of passage into being a civilian where you like dye your hair, you get a piercing or you put a tattoo where you couldn't put it before. And uh, you have to do like one of those things to really feel like a civilian again to like, it's kind of like you're testing the waters with something somewhat extreme, but you're like, I'm going to get a note. Like I want to, when I got my nose piercing, I was like, well, I don't want to dye my hair. I already have tattoos. Like I'm going to, I'm just going to go try this and see what happens. And you then it's like, looking around, like yeah, you know no one, <laughs> we good. I can, we, I can go to work on Monday and no, no one even noticed. I was like, yeah. wow. Okay. Uh, that's different. Um, like not putting my hair in a bun like the yeah, others. It's definitely uh, interesting, especially when you grow up in the military, you don't have any like reference. It's like yes. baby me and then like military me. There's no like adult me. Um, I know that, gosh, we haven't talked in a while, but I know that when last time we talked, last time I was in San Diego, which it's been a long time since I've been in San Diego other than to go to the airport, uh, you had kind of been thinking about some entrepreneurship ventures and you've always been like a phenomenal stylist. So I was like, we going to see like what's what's so what's going on with that? Where are you, where are you at with that? That was, uh, that is rather, not was. It's one of the things that with the expectations of that I placed on myself, um, one huge thing I can say to anybody getting out of the military, do all those things that you want to do that you've thought about doing. So do it at your pace, do it at your time. Don't be in a rush to do it because that's what I was. I was in a rush to, I felt like I was in a rush to do it because of what I wanted. I had a need to let people know that I was okay. Like I had to, they had to know I was okay. And how else am I okay living in, in a city that's so expensive? Oh, I have this going on. I have this going on. I have this going on. All these things I want to do and I'm going to do, but it's more of a timing thing for me. Um, so now um, I am, I pull back a little bit so I can perfect and not perfect in a way of like, oh, it has to be perfect, but perfect my idea of what I want to do and what it looks like in, for me. So I bought my LLC for my hat business, Custom Crowns. LLC, because that's the first thing that I want to do. Um, how I want to do it was the uh, thing that I, I had to fix. It was like, am I making all of these different hats? Because I see people with different hats and 
all these different things like or now i'm in the sense of let me get my one that i want and expound on that so um that's what i'm doing now i'm in the works with doing that creating a, a logo for it um and then figuring out what my first um hat will be color the print the fabric all of that i'm also working on writing a book everyone told me that there right. is yeah. a a lot that i've been through and not everyone told me i know that i've been through a lot especially in the navy um and i can go into that a little bit being falsely accused of sexual assault from a person i considered a friend like the best friend of mine like a little brother more than anything just because he didn't want to go on deployment um i prior to getting out i made chief and i was lied on and ridiculed and all these, i went from being your number one sailor to oh he's a dirt bag and all these things i'm like with the, i'm your sailor of the year all these things and to that all because someone didn't like me because of my past and how i decided to not let my past dictate where my future goes it was seen as a sign of strength for me but to them it's like no well we can't beat him instead of beat him let's get him out and not join him in this because i'm willing and i would have been i still am i will teach you or i will show you how i grow through things like we can't bad is going to happen embrace it that's what i tried to do and i tried to lean into the good so i'm writing my story and it's not a story to bash the military to bash anyone more so how I internalize things and how I continue to move forward. Losing my mom right before deployment and deciding to go back to the boat two weeks after because my sailors needed me. I've always been a sailor for sailors, but that's a part of that. And the book will talk about how I chose people over myself, whereas I often do that. And it's not always wrong, but if you don't have anything left within yourself, you can't choose people. You have to pour into you first or you're pouring from an empty cup, you're depleted and they're not getting what they need as well because you feel like you have to be the person to give to them. So the book will have all of those different things that everything I've gone through and it's finding strength through the struggle um, that's helped me. And that's that will be the title of the book. If not a chapter in the book, it might be the title, but I'm trying to, I'm working that as well. Finding strength through the struggle and how we have, to, we keep going because when bad things happen, life doesn't stop. You still have bills to pay, you have a life to live. And then at the same, with me losing my mom, she wouldn't want me to be down, depressed and not, you know, fulfilling the things that she sacrificed a lot for me to have these things. So moving forward, also honored her, so, but it's not an easy feat. Um, it comes at a cost, but that's, those are a few of the things. And then there's some thoughts of a clothing line brand, um, just I, I mean I, I think i dress well <laughs> but i do it based off of like how i feel and i like to help others feel good you look good you feel good people would always say like oh you go to the gym you math and too yes i like to <laughs> you look good you feel good <laughs> yesterday we had the gym me and my boyfriend and that was the thing like I, i'm like i mean that's what people say and i mean i do so um, clothes have always been my escape, especially being in the military when you're being told what to wear, how to wear. Now you're out, make your own style, your own look. Everybody has beauty. It's how you decide to tap into your beauty. Um, and everybody can write a book. That book doesn't have to be a literal book. It can be a picture, something that tells a story, podcasting, something. Everybody has a story. And I feel like that's a part of it. We do our due diligence until the world, people, friends, whoever, the things that we've gone through and how we've gotten through it, we move us as a society forward. That's what we're put on this earth to do a part of, you know, it's healing for yourself, but it's also healing for the next person. Yeah, no, I, I will say having been in the business world for a while now, um, you're doing things the right way. Cause I know like my first couple of years, I had a lot of different business ventures that I was wanting to start and I didn't have a really clear cut path. And I think you, uh, in my opinion, I think you gave yourself as much time as you felt you needed to really make that picture a little bit clearer. And uh, I'm really excited that you decided to, um, to move forward with the book. Cause when we talked about it, it was just in like the idea stage. 
And I think you do have a very interesting story to tell because it's a true testament to your willpower because you went through a lot of stuff that was completely, like, people were trying to degrade your character and having been around you and having been around these somewhat interactions that you've had with other people, I was like confident in saying that there's a very, it's, you know, dang near impossible that these things happened and that this was a clear attack on your character. And, you know, I think that you getting out was, I hope that it has helped you find more happiness and kind of get through that muddy time in the military because you're such a good person. And I was so excited when you got out. I was like, he is going to flourish. Like, I feel like the Navy stifled you a little bit and you were definitely destined for so much more. And seeing how they treated you towards the end, I was like, oh yeah, he's going to do great outside. Like they, they lost a really good person. So that's a, uh, and in terms of style though, dude, like I'm from the South Bronx. I don't have no style whatsoever, like jeans and a t-shirt. And like, I had no real idea of what, of what that freedom of expression could be. Cause the only real way I expressed myself was like with tattoos and seeing that you could kind of do the same thing with clothing. I didn't really, I didn't really meet anybody who dressed well <laughs> until we hung out outside of the, outside of the military, outside of like service. And I was like, Oh dang, he could see us one. All right. All right. See us one. All right. Like teach me, teach me more. I definitely learned a lot. I think I, in terms of my personal style, I, th I think you definitely influenced me a bit. Not that I dress that much better, but I don't dress like a tomboy from New York anymore. <laughs> so uh, there's that. But um, so, okay. So you got out, you're, you kind of have like these, these things in motion. I'm curious how you got into like the hats. Cause I know you were doing like personal style and like private stylist, but um, I, I remember seeing some pictures. I didn't realize that you created those. Yes. So I am the type of person, if I don't see what I want, I create, I will make it. I've done like shoes for myself, uh, redesign a blazer, um, other hats and stuff. The hat idea, at first it started with like the fedora. Um, it was a holiday party. And I'm like, well, I want to, you know, be out of the box with it. Um, and let me just, I couldn't find what I wanted, so let me create it. I went to the fabric store, um, had some jewelry that I really wasn't wearing anymore, so I'm like cutting it up and adding to it. And I get to the uh, holiday party, and everybody's like, wow, where'd you get that hat? I'm like, I made it. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, I've always been that, I don't want to say artistic, I, it's more of like a it's in my head. I guess it's artistic. <laughs> I guess it's artistic, creative. but it's, it's something. Yeah. Like, there we go. Um, and then I had like the the um, snapbacks. I love a snapback. And my initial was the rose. That on my necklace is a rose as well. It's for my mom. A rose is that flower that we save. You know, we dry out roses because it keeps the same form. So it's my sense, my me saying that she's still with me in the same form that she was prior to. And then roses have thorns. So when I see a rose, you pick up a rose and you go down the stem. There are smooth parts. There are uh, sticky parts. That's life. As we go down, as we go through life, it's going to be smooth. It's going to be sticky. It's going to hurt. Um, and then it heals and we get through it. And then with the beauty that you have with holding this rose and being with this rose. So um, I wanted to have one of my hats here. I don't know where it is, but um, it's... I know Rose will be some way incorporated and then Rose, I'm working on the meaning for me and I don't want to put out what it means, the acronym for Rose for me just yet, but um, it will be out. Um, and, I mean, it's, it's finding that thing that hurts you or that hurt you or um, inspires you to keep going. And that's, that was a hat. It, it's an added accessory. I love accessories when it comes to, you know, clothing and stuff. So it's an added accessory and I can have it and walk in triumph as I'm walking through and in pain, but I am triumphant in, in that process. So that's how the hats really came about. And it was, it was really just supposed to be for me. My mind is never like, oh, I can do this to capitalize it, you know, monetize this, but, um, Someone said to me, 
it's not necessarily just it's not monetizing it's giving someone else hope as well to go because when i tell them why and i tell them the story of it it's not about the money but it's the the thing and then money allows me to do that at a broader you know scale to more people reach more people because you know supply and demand somebody has something they're going to want it, and then they get to hear my story or hear someone else's story that was affected by something that they got from me yeah i definitely that's something that i i try to teach younger entrepreneurs or newer entrepreneurs is that being like being a service to others and not necessarily chasing the money, but doing something that you enjoy to spread a message or to help somebody else through that message. That's phenomenal. I, um, I'll have to include some pictures in post of, of the hats. Cause I, I remember seeing one and I was like, that makes sense. Like your creativity is so natural that um, I'm not a very creative person in terms of like artistic ability through any means, <laughs> through art, through song, through poetry, through fashion. So I always admire people who have that that skill and that talent because it's um, I just I love it. I, I love it because I can't do it myself, but I appreciate it a little bit more. So I'm super excited to see where that goes. And I love the concept of a rose. Um, that's yeah. That's gonna be awesome. I'll have to we'll have to have you back on when things launch because I'm I'm excited yes. to see see what you uh what you got because I have to include pictures. I'm gonna have to include pictures in post because I think for our listeners, if they want to see kind of why I'm kind of at a loss for words with how creative you are, you just have to see the pictures. I think that would probably do you more justice uh, than anything else. But so what what's kind of like the five year plan? What's the what do you got? What are you thinking? Um, five years. Um, I see myself having launched um, the hat business and rolling that into apparel um, that goes with it. Um, I my thing when I go working out is running. Why I like running? Not necessarily I like the feeling of running as I'm doing it because it's like oh my god, I want to stop. But running allows me to free up my mind and then so many ideas hit me. So as I'm running, what was this, Friday, Thursday, I'm running and I'm thinking about how to execute these things. Um, and without you even looking at the interview, you know, thinking about this, five year plan was in my mind on it. So where I see myself in five years with this business um, and a lot of great things are coming. I want to do a lunch party. I want to have merch. I want to have a story. Ultimately, it will be hat, apparel, and book all together because it all makes a story. It's a circle. Every it, it connects, and I mean, I'm intentional by things as well. But I just think it's a beauty to see um, the struggle that I've gone through. There's the book. There's the hat. Um, but I'm making it. it it's yeah, because a lot of times we see, you know, it's kind of like that 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 movie that we're watching, and it's. Well, we have to wait to part two to see. I want to be able to give the fullness of it. Like there was struggle here, there was uh, heart uh, wrenching moments, and then we made it through. So, it's I see it before five years, but within five years, definitely there will be uh, a lot of great news, and some of it starts at the beginning of the year. Is my expected start of launching things. So. Yeah, I look, I, I'm really excited for this. I definitely will need to purchase um, whatever you design. I, I've been slowly getting more into or paying a little bit more attention to how I present myself, especially, you know, going to these events and networking with other entrepreneurs. I've come to realize how important it is when you dress and when you know you look good. Like I know that my I'm pretty confident, but I know that my confidence skyrockets when I know that I don't look like a bag of ass. Like I actually look like I dressed myself. And like, I think that I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I know I've leaned on you a lot for, um, for some of creative help. So I guess it just kind of makes sense. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. Do you see yourself in San Diego? Do you see yourself in California? Is, is staying here the plan or we international? No. Nah. I don't know. I am open to all things. Talking to my boyfriend, we were um, we just kind of talking around about where we would go, move, 
or anything. Seattle is open is a possibility. Um, I am a lot. I like untapped markets as well. There's a lot mm. of untapped market in San Diego when it comes to fashion. So launching and starting everything here is great, but I don't have to stay here. I have this home here, but I can sell and move elsewhere. So I'm not really sure. Um, it just depends on, you know, how the wind blows <laughs> and where no, the next yeah. opportunity sends or takes me. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dr. V Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Verga. I wanted to let you guys know that I will be starting a new series called Path to Faith. This is going to be my spiritual journey, me kind of getting back into a position where I have a closer relationship with God. I feel as though I've spent a really long time angry at God. I've gone through a lot and I think that while I don't think it broke my relationship with God, I do think that it halted a, my journey. It halted my spiritual growth. And I would like to prioritize that once again. I am not a, I'm not associated with any religious organization or any specific denomination of any particular religion. This is simply me reading the Bible, reading other holy books, and just learning from the scripture. I have already started this. I have this notebook here, which is where I've been keeping my notes and where I've been writing down, you know, just just quotes and things that that really resonate with me. So I have, you know, quotes from Exodus and Genesis. And now obviously the Bible is a very it was a very long text. So I am not trying to rush it. I'm not trying to get through any particular area of scripture just so I can have a podcast episode. But I have already started and I wanted to share that journey with all of you guys. It will not be hosted on the Dr. Verga podcast. It will be on my website, jessieverga.com, where you can check out Path to Faith and you can listen to the episodes there. I will kind of talk a little bit about spiritual health in this podcast simply because spiritual health and spiritual wellness is a part of wellness, wisdom, and warfare. And I think it's incredibly important. So if you are interested in kind of listening to me go through this journey or maybe you you know you want to leave a comment for me or maybe I missed something in terms of lessons and things to be learning from the scripture that maybe I've missed or overlooked or maybe that you don't agree with my interpretation of it I would love your feedback again I am doing this alone I do not have a mentor I'm not affiliated with any church or any religious organization so I I'm looking forward to interacting with you as I go through this this journey once again. So if you, again, want to check it out, it's jessieverga.com. You can check out Path to Faith and I will see you there. God bless. No, that's that's great. I mean, I think that's kind of how I've been leaning lately is I'm just like, why, why stop here, right? I got my pilot's license. Like I'll fly myself wherever the hell I want to fly and just, you know, stay there as long as I want to stay. I think that freedom is, uh, I think in the military, we we like the travel, but I think we appreciate the freedom of being a civilian a little bit more than the average oh civilian. <laughs> yes. The things that I'm... I, yesterday, we woke up and went to a workout class. We, and we didn't have to wake up at a, a crazy time. Like in military, to do a workout before work, you're waking up at four or mm-hmm. five, you know. <laughs> and then depending on your job. <laughs> so to wake yeah. up and go to the gym, come back, go and walk our dog, get coffee, and then going to work. Those things, and I said to him, I was like, those things you would not have been able to do in the military on a weekday. Um, yeah. Traveling, just going without putting in leave, uh, without requesting anything, so much. I would never have met him had I still been in the military. Maybe maybe we would have passed each other, but I would do kickball on Sundays with this amazing out loud sports uh, team. And that's where we met. Had I not been out of the military, I wouldn't have been able. I wouldn't have had time to do kickball on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Sunday is the only time you have to yourself because you got duty days and all these other things. So, being out of the military, though it is scary to get out, it is worth it. And a lot of people, thirteen years, and it's like, oh, you can out of thirteen. You should have just took uh, twenty. It was only seven more, seven more years. They say it as though. It's like seven weeks, seven days, seven months. Yeah. No, it's seven <laughs> years. And then it's typically comes from people that didn't even do a day. So. <laughs> yeah. I have really enjoyed your stories and your posts lately. You and him look so happy. I look. I hope I get to meet him. And I, I was like, when I saw those pictures, I was like, wow. Like I, 
I don't know if I've ever really seen you just your happiness just kind of like spilling through the photo. It was always like you were enjoying yourself, but I'm like, that is a that is a good match right there. <laughs> That's definitely uh I have been in relationships, but never one like this. And this yeah. is the best thing. I honestly, after losing my mom, I didn't think that I would find this type of connection or love with anybody else. Um, and I know it was nothing but sent from above. <laughs> like this, it was meant and the timing. So yeah, thank you. Definitely a good yeah. And I can't wait for that no. either. And he's he's adorable. Like I was like, oh my goodness, look at how cute he is. Just flawless face. I was like, this this man doesn't have a single wrinkle. Like he's just just chiseled out of stone. I was like, what the heck? L little jealousy right there. I'm gonna need a skincare routine next, but no. He has uh, one. He does yeah. have one. <laughs> I was like, please have a skincare routine because if that shit's natural. <laughs> That's well, my no. cover, she's like, oh, I just, her boyfriend hates her. He's like, and on the weekend, she's like, I wonder what Brian and Hunter are doing. And he's like, yeah. what are you doing? What are you talking about? It's like, they're so cute. Like, they're so cute. I'm like, we are yeah. coming. We're the cutest couple of kickball. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was just us saying it, but now it's like, it's it's gotten around and everyone feels it <laughs> without us even saying it. So, I mean, it just, you can tell that you guys compliment each other. And I think that whether people realize it or not, but that can really be seen in a photo and just the way you carry yourself and the things that you're able to do. It's like, Oh, I can't do this. Cause, cause he doesn't want to do this. It's like when you find someone that really compliments your life, it's so effortless. And I think people forget that, but uh, I did have another question for you. I know. Um, and this is just coming from me because I have recently tapped back into my faith a little bit, but how with all the challenges in life and, you know, losing your mom, which I know is extremely difficult. How, how has your connection to God been? Like, how has your faith been through all of that? Ooh, um, it was definitely tested. Um, and it has been, it, it has been a roller coaster. It's been a roller coaster of emotions to where I want to lean more into, but then I was doing it out of, well, this is what I'm used to. Whereas I needed to just like, um, the business uh, aspects and, and going into it, I was doing it out of expectations. This, I had to step back a little bit and really relearn and I'm learning my relationship with Christ again, like getting back into it. It was shaky, it was rocky, but then I, there are moments where I know I wouldn't have made it through anything or this without that. And I had to remind myself that my mom isn't hurting. She hurt for so long, she sacrificed so much, um, put herself through so much, and this is better. She has her mansion now. She's living and watching us continue on. I'm living through her, so it was not easy in the beginning, um, but I'm making it, and I'm learning to take it one day at a time, and I put that out to others and anyone. Like it, It's finding life through, because I, I remember I used to say, like, if I lose my mom, because she had been sick for so long of my life, losing my mom, I just don't know if I'll continue. And then when that actually happens, what do you do? My world, it just didn't feel real for so long. And I'm coming up on three years and it was on my birthday of all days. But I look at that as a day of, she could have done it before, she could have done it after, but she wanted, she made sure she saw one more birthday with me and she left. It was a reminder that she's always going to be with me. And I could have taken it in a negative way. I was like, oh, my birthday and this stuff, all of these things, but no. And I remember when it happened, everyone was like, oh, how's he going to take it? It's his birthday and this. And I immediately kind of rallied everyone like, nope, at the funeral, every year on this day, we will celebrate. We won't be sad. We're going to live. She lived. She enjoyed living. So we're going to do it. So. It's like it's she forced a, a you to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. It's like she was forcing you to celebrate. No, I think that I, I had to ask that only because I I found myself angry with God for a really long time. And it really, really halted my 
my like connection, I guess, with my faith. And I just started a series called Path to Faith, where I'm kind of like revisiting the Bible and revisiting teachings and kind of trying to walk that path again after having been angry for so long, kind of looking for someone to blame for just what life does. And uh, it, it definitely took a it's taken a long time, but I, I, um, I tend to ask that question for, um, for anybody that I have on that I know is, is, you know, of the faith, but, um, uh, yeah, no, I think big, that, big, um, is a good answer. <laughs> biggest part with this for me, um, making it what you want, the expectation piece being what your expectation is. And it's like, God, he is a God of choice. It's not, we're not made to follow. We have the choice to do so. So pulling away doesn't mean that you don't love, doesn't mean that you don't believe in. It's more of like, let me reevaluate how I go about my faith. Because as we evolve and grow into these people that we are, we go through different parts. I said this to one of my cousins yesterday. Um, when we have opportunities and things, God is preparing us for the next elevation of our lives. This is a part of the evolution, like you questioning and, and not because blind trust and faith yes but also be able to know why you're trusting and why you're believing and not just because oh well people say you need to believe blindly you know blind faith but why do you is it just because of people or what you know that he is doing has done for your life so when you question it it's a good and positive thing we question things when it comes to science and we move forward grow and move forward in that way it's the same thing with with god you question why he's big enough to answer it's nothing wrong with doing so yeah, thank you for saying that. I think that's a really, um, I didn't think of it like that. And I think that's a really good way of of putting it just to walk your own path and not because someone is telling you to walk this path, like make the choice for yourself. So yeah, thank you for saying that. That's, um, that means a lot to me just because I, I always, I'm not regretted losing my faith, but I always felt some type of way about it. But I, I appreciate you saying it like that, because I think that is going to help move me move forward a little bit. And anybody who's listening, who's ever struggled with their faith, I think that is a, a great way of putting it. So, yeah, I guess um, to try and like, I guess to wrap things up a little bit, do you, is there anything that you want to say to fellow veterans or is there anything you want to just comment about, you know, what's to come in terms of your, uh, your businesses and your book? Do you have any like last little message for everybody? I do for veterans getting out or people transitioning out and veterans that are already out as well. Do those BDD claims, get your, set, set yourself up. I know a lot of people felt like, oh, or feel, um, I don't want to get over and it's lying and it's not lying. Whether these things affect you today or not, they will become, they will start to affect you. And then it's not like urgent care. You can't just go in because now you're feeling this thing. If you have struggles with depression, any mental thing, get that documented and get seen for it now um, and do your BDD so that the day you get out, you're able to get it. You're able to be seen. You're able to be taken care of because you served. I don't care if it was two years, 25, whatever you serve and you deserve these things. A lot of people think you get all these benefits in the Navy. No, you get more benefits when you get out um, or in the military, out of the military. As far as business, there will be things, um, underscore, just believe with two E's at the end. I will be posting all the things. And then once I get my website um, up, that will be on that as well as an Instagram for the business. Um, I kind of pulled things down and I'm revamping. Um, so a lot to come in 2025. It is the year of me. And hopefully we don't have to deal with um, another January 6th. Uh, day so <laughs> it doesn't yeah. put a, a dark shadow over the world yeah no absolutely thanks for uh thanks for that and i definitely recommend for military whether you plan on getting out or not go to medical <laughs> get that get that stuff documented i think someone told me that early on and that's what i did and it made my transition out and my claims a lot easier because there was documentation and then uh, I will leave links on the screen in post and I'll put some in the in the description and on my website for your social media so people can follow this journey because I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm, I'm really glad we had the opportunity to uh, to connect and to have you on here. I'm I'm really happy that I was able to um, 
to get you because I know that you're busy. And I was like, I need to make sure that I have you on here. Um, but with that, I am going to end the recording. Mm -hmm.